Tyson become. On any other night, the next action would be a fitting top of the bill. As it is, it might be the fight of the night. People are starting to run short of patience with Joe Calzaghe. For David Starry, he says this is the moment he has spent 15 years getting ready for. And here we go, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Super Middleweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first, the challenger on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks with gold stars, fighting out of it, representing his hometown of Bury St. Edmunds, England. He weighed in at 11 stone, 13 and a half pounds, or 167 and one half U.S. pounds. His fine record stands at 22 wins, only one defeat, with 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the British and Commonwealth champion, presently ranked the number seven super middleweight contender by the WBO, introducing tonight's challenger, David Starry. And his opponent across the ring is the defending world champion on my right, fighting out of the red the corner, wearing black trunks with red lettering, hailing from Newbridge, Wales. His weight, 11 stone, 13 and 3 quarter pounds, 167 and 3 quarter U.S. pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with 27 wins, no losses, 23 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight making the fifth defense of his title, please welcome the defending WBO Super Middleweight Champion of the World, the undefeated Joe Kawasaki. Once again, our referee in charge, John Coyle, now the instructions, 12 rounds of championship boxing schedule. Thank you, gentlemen, I've spoken to you both. I want the highest standard of professionalism and sportsmanship. Shake hands, back to your corners, and answer the bell. Good luck. John Coyle, excellent referee, must have come close to getting the Tyson fight tonight. It's gone to Roy Francis. I'll tell you one thing, usually before the big event, people are in the bars at arenas, but everybody's come out to watch this fight, which could be pretty competitive. Starry seems very relaxed. And hopefully for you at home, they're both wearing black. The British Boxing Board of Control should have done something about that. Starry's the one with the yellow diamonds down the side of his shorts. Red lettering on Calzaghe, the champion's trunks. Calzaghe from Newbridge in South Wales. Starry from Bury St Edmunds in Suffolk. Can he provide some Suffolk punch here? Oh, oh, how's he took some Kawasaki early. How's he going to cope with the southpaw stance? And there was a quick answer there when he got caught with that left hook. Remember, Kawasaki had the very durable and rock-like Chris Eubank on the floor in the first round with a left hook when those two met. Went on to beat him as well in a terrific fight. Kawasaki, who seems mentally refreshed, and recharged after appearing to get a bit disillusioned with the business last year when he had such a frustrating time one way and another. Kawasaki on the right of the picture as you look at them. He's having success with that left hook, isn't he? Yes, he's having a bit of success. He's, they're both coming in too close and getting starting the mall and that's a, a bit of a problem. They both need room. Starry's got to use his boxing skills early on. Kawasaki boxing out of the south full stance, leading with the right, could be a problem for Starry, who's usually quite flashy, hands down by his side. He's had some good wins though, Starry, including one over Clinton Woods, who's gone on to be a uh, triple champion at light heavyweight. Some feel that Kawasaki would just be too strong for Starry here. Well, he does seem the, the physically bigger man and thoughts were that Starry could maybe make middleweight but right. you know, or is he a big middleweight but he campaigns in the super middleweight division Kawasaki anxious to prove too in his career that he's not just somebody who can blast not just a puncher that he can box pretty well too and he's had to do that too when he's had hand trouble in quite a lot of his fights and hasn't really been able to hit properly. The left hand has usually been the problem. We'll be hoping beyond hope 
but there's no further injury tonight, otherwise there'll be some serious question marks about his whole career. Bit messy this opening round. Yes, it is obviously the clash of styles, Southport Orthodox sometimes doesn't lend, but it's the best to fight, but I'm sure there's a lot of nerves, a lot of tension there, and you know, they're just coming too close and hauling too much. Kalsagi landing most of the punches that are getting through. Starry hasn't really got started as yet. Maybe needs to do a little bit more from long range. Very tentative Starry and Kalsagi's opening round beyond the spirit. Just had Enzo working the corner, an ex-singer who appeared in a video with Banana Rama many, many years ago. You remember them, don't you, Glenn? Just the boat. Yeah, of course you do. <laughs> of course you do. Now then, excerpts from round one. It was Kalsagi's round, wasn't it? Tim? It was. He did. He did slight, slightly more. He was the one that was leading off first. Uh, there was a little bit too much more in the hole, but you see there in close, Kalsagi's the one who's trying to get his arms free and trying to get the shots on. Nice little left hook inside there as he's trying to get those arms free. Starry just holding a bit inside. Hasn't really got off to the start he'd want. The WBO Super Middleweight Championship on the line Round in Britain. Two. Three big Super Middleweights of recent years. Chris Eubank, Nigel Benn, Steve Collins, all in attendance at ringside and watching this tonight. Some thought that Collins may be coming back. Kalsagi with the red lettering on his trunks, the Welshman. The Welshman with Italian ancestry, supports Juventus. There's a lot of holding going on, the arms becoming intertwined. The referee trying to let them work on the inside. really is a massive night for Starry. His chance to prove that he has what it takes at world level. Well, they were both good amateurs, both contemporaries in the, in the amateurs, although they never fought each other. So they both have a, a good level of technical ability. Both ABA champions in the same year, seven years ago, Calzaghi at middle, Starry light middle. Never fought each other. Starry on the inside. It's a bit of a hint of a slap about it. Scoring punch, I think, though. Kalsaki getting there with the left hook. Well, it's scrappy, but Kalsaki doing a little bit more. He's getting through the, the with the punches inside. Well, I hope it's not going to be this kind of fight because they're watching this in the United States. They've probably heard about Kalsagi. A lot of people over there think he is the best super middleweight in the world but they'll want a bit of proof on their television screens and at the moment he's not really getting much of a chance to shine. Starry having his successes a little more in this round but that left hook of Kalsagi working for him. Left hook, left cross. Sorry's a talented operator as well, so you know, he's doing his best not to make Joe Kalzaghi shine. Rather stumbled into the left hand of Kalzaghi there. Seems to be a little marked by the right eye of Starry. Not much more than a scraze at the moment. Kalzaghi looking a little reddened around the face too. Keeps on having to take these left hands though, doesn't he, Starry? He's does tend to fight with his gloves down by his side, not showing his face. Well, this is not what they had in mind, I don't think, Starry Cap, so far, is it? No, I don't think it is, but they find it difficult to, to do anything against 
counter-attacking. He's very quick. He's taking the fight to Story. He's getting the, the quick little combinations in before Story gets close enough to him. And Story is really just trying to spoil. And already Karzai, I think, caught him with a few decent punches. Gordon Holmes doing the talking there. There's Enzo Calzaghi and Ernie Fossey, the old campaign, a great cut man in that corner with uh, Joe Calzaghi. Starry did come through a bit of a mess of a fight, didn't he, with Mark Baker. Different level, I know. Maybe uh, his plan is to just nullify Calzaghi as much as he can early on and just come strong a little later on. Well, I think that's what we try and do, but really he needs to get some sharp boxing. He needs to try and, you know, catch Calzaghi with some good punches. He's not been allowed to do that, and I think these punches of Calzaghi's inside are taking a bit out of Starry. pocket raid almost by Kalzaki with the left hand to the body. Just the problem with the styles not quite gelling with Kalzaki being a South foreign starry orthodox. says he's been working towards tonight for 15 years. And this is Dad who first took him down to the gym. Both of these two pretty likeable family men outside of the ring. They both need the money from this hard business. Be a big breakthrough for Starry tonight if he could prevail. Well, that would be a massive break to win it, I really would get his career off the ground. He's British and Commonwealth champion at the moment. Well, that doesn't lead to that big money. Right, step back, on your toes. A little right counter there from Starry scoring for him. Come on, working for him, get out. looks as if it's going to be pretty attritional, doesn't it? It is, but it's just starting to develop a little bit. They're just starting to get through more and more. You know, there's little gaps coming where they're, they're starting to work. There's another little nick under the left eye of Starry now, too. Just minor little abrasions on his face, a couple of them. It could develop, possibly, into more serious problems for him later on little sprays by the side of the right eye and a nick under the left for Starry. Right. Right. Starry's got to start doing something more effective. You know, he doesn't really look as if he's fight getting his fight plan going. Well, he's just existing in the fight, isn't he, at the moment. It's Kawasaki who's trying to make it. Starry needs to do more. Sixth round. David Starry with the yellow stars on his trunks from Suffolk, challenging for the WBO Super Middleweight Championship here. Joe Calzaghi, fifth defense of the championship. The championship he won back in late 1997 in a great fight against Chris Eubank. But afterwards, with the hand injury he had, he was feeling it for six weeks. And another good right hand from Starry, holding the head back of Kalazaki. Starry lighter on his feet now, trying to find some different angles, maybe confuse and bamboozle Kalazaki. Starry's corner, urging him to be more assertive in boxing parlance, be first. 
Good right hand from him. He was first there. There's less effective work coming from Calzaghi as this works on this contest. Well, certainly in the last round and this round, he's done a lot less. He just seems to be puzzled by this you know, almost lazy, relaxed style from Starry, but get Starry getting more and more effective. Again, the right hand. Looks better when he's on the outside, doesn't he, Starry? Much better. He needs that sort of room. He does have fast hands, nice, relaxed style. And he can pick Calzaghi when Calzaghi comes forward. Calzaghi looking to close the range all the time. Once again, Joe Calzaghi just finding it hard to shine again up tonight. Blood about Ian. I think Starry might have a cut. There's certainly some blood coming from somewhere. Well, he had those nicks on it. Well, that cut by the right eye, the earlier one. Well, I mentioned that that could get worse, and now it has. A cut by the side of the right eye for Starry. But I think it's going to be okay because it is by the side of the eye, and it, the blood shouldn't obscure the vision there. But we'll try to get a closer look. He certainly opened up in this sixth round. There's also the psychological factor on Starry himself at getting to that's always, you know, can upset a fighter a little bit, upset the rhythm. Might well have been a clash of heads, I think. Well, Starry has done the more effective work, I think, in the round. Oh, there's a lot of blood about that eye, didn't look good. But it was in the sixth round that Starry lost to Dean Francis, so it's a bit of an unlucky round for him at top level. Now, just looking at that cut as he comes over there, Starry, I think that's going to be all right. It's by the side of the eye at the moment, if it gets no worse. And they've got Mick Williamson, good cut man, a London cab driver there, to work on it. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, hopefully it will be all right. The awful to be stopped with a, with a cut. But uh, still, it's not a good thing to have in a story. And all of a sudden, it puts them on the, on the back foot with more things to think about. There, that's the clash of heads. That's uh, well identified by our team backstage. Well, that was unfortunate. Four stories just rushing in. There had been a lot of close work, and it always the possibility that that could happen. Seventh round, then. The WBO Super Middleweight title, which has almost been an exclusive preserve of Britain in recent years. Kawasaki gets there with a left hand, but this is getting closer now, this fight. It's been no spectacular so far, but maybe in the second half of the contest, we're going to see a, a real tight scrap for this title. Because I think Starry might have just nicked a couple of these last three rounds. Can I give him a, a level one, the fifth, and I give Starry the, the sixth, but I've still got Kansaki three points ahead. But there was certainly a notable, noticeable, um, better work from Starry in the last round. Well, a lot of the pre-fight predictions from the writers this morning were Kalzaki to blow Starry away inside six rounds. That definitely hasn't happened. No, it's never ha it hasn't happened and never really looked possible. I mean, Starry's still equipping himself quite well light on his speed he doesn't look as if he's got inferior strength to Galzaghi which is what a lot of people were kind of thinking might be the case but really and Galzaghi failing to impress again and he, you know, he didn't really in his last two fights there have been excuses for him but he may be running out of excuses to shine he's been a little sensitive to the criticism on some occasions joe but i've noticed a more mature approach from him this time there's been less of a cocky chat from him he's sort of backward down to business and 
I think he seems some happier with where he is in the business he knows he's got to work and prove himself i think last year he was thinking that he was going to become a millionaire overnight and his path would be paved with gold it doesn't work like that does it it doesn't it's, it's a very tough sport and a very tough business and uh, you know kanzaki is beginning to learn how, you know how tough it is sorry got there with another right hand just single shots from him maybe he needs to do a little bit more than that to impress the judges because they do have this impression, watching it, that it's Calzaghi who's on the attack most of the time. The one truth, neither one that effective. No. <laughs> Nobody's really taken control of this. It's a fight that's there to be won for both of them. Not some good work with the left hand in close there from Kawasaki. I think he just make that one, don't you, Kawasaki? Did yeah, more, I think he did. It? He was trying to do more work. The crowd getting a little impatient. Eleventh round of this world title fight for the WBO Super Middleweight title. Kawasaki, we've got well clear here with two rounds to go. Starry needs a stoppage. Not much sign of that happening. Starry with those yellow stripes or stars i should say on his black trunks why have they allowed both boxers to wear black in a world championship fight it's ridiculous absolutely ridiculous i mean years ago they used to say that you know you had to have two pairs of shorts if you're a six round fighter or whatever you had to have two if the, if the colors clashed you changed you, know, you tossed up and changed now world title by tv and they both have black absolutely ridiculous suppose it for the spectators and of course for the tv viewers a bit as well but surely that makes it a little more difficult for the judges here. It does, that's the main thing. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're controlling the fight, it? You know, it makes it difficult for them to see who's doing what. Particularly as they're probably unfamiliar, apart from Nicky Van, with what the two of them look like. Should have been Starry who changed, he's the challenger. Kawasaki always wears black. Star has had the odd moment in this fight, but he's never really been able to sustain anything. And I'm afraid the verdict on him here is, once again, when he moved up in level, he's blown it a bit. Yes, it's been a, a poor effort from David Starry. I know he's in with a good fighter in Kalzaki, but yeah, I believe that you know, it's a world title fight. You know, he said he's waited 15 years for this. Well, if you want to pack 15 years effort into the biggest night of your life, and you know, he's barely put 15 minutes effort in. Sounds like he's very inaccurate there with his own shots too. I think there might be some ring rust as well for Kalsagi. He's been out of ring for quite a time that might be a bit of an excuse for him but only a bit well normally if there's a bit of ring rust by the middle rounds you're starting to get your, your timing you're starting to come together never really happened for Kalzaki. oh it's a good right hand that that's one of the best punches so far from Kalzaki. and once again starry rather walked onto it every time he does try to come forward he's been hit with some maybe significant shots and maybe that's why he has been a little tentative but the reason he's getting hit is that he tends to let his gloves drop low doesn't he it's natural style I mean, a lot of really great fighters box with their hands pretty low haven't they yes he's got a relaxed style hands down chin up a little bit so you know he's going to take some shots So one round to go, how have you got it, Glenn? Well, I've got um, Kalzaki in quite a, a big lead at this, at this point, somewhere six or seven rounds. Yeah. Seven rounds. I've got it five to Kalzaki. I'm sure it must be quite lopsided on the scorecard for the judges. Not because Kalzaki's been that great, but Starry has been, well, lackluster, really, hasn't he? He's been very lackluster, and I think a little, in a little way, maybe Kalzaki's come down to his level. Uh, I think he would have liked it if he'd had a, a fighter who was more in front of him, who was more willing to fight. 
I mean, you could have seen a, a lot more of Joe Calzaghe. But in fairness, you know, he hasn't done a great deal of thinking in there to see you know, where he can get through, you know, change style, do something different. Last round and a big cheer from the crowd because it is the last round. They'll be glad to see it over. There's people booing in the audience. A few people tune, but they're tuned, the ones that are booing. In the language of the boxing business, Starry just hasn't wanted it enough, has he, Glenn? He hasn't, and that's what it's it's all about in world title fight. You've really got to want it. And he hasn't. It's been a, a lackluster, too relaxed performance. Cut. Gets a bit bad for Starry. Looks like it might be another one. He was caught by a right hand as well. The other eye. The other's cut by both eyes now. Too late, I think, to matter. Mick Williamson did a very good job on the cut by the uh, right eye, the first one. It's the least of Starry's problems, quite honestly, at this stage. Desire, devil, hunger, ambition lacking from David Starry tonight. Calzaghe just not on form, but doing most of the work in a messy fight. Calzaghe has looked tired as well. You know, he, sometimes he's been content to stay inside and hold. No surprise at that. You know, he hasn't really asserted himself. He hasn't tried to really take control of this fight. I just wonder with Calzaghe whether he is really comfortable at super middleweight, whether he needs to move up to light heavyweight, that might explain the fact that he's been a little flat. He says he found it easier this time, but I wonder. of a big attack from Starry, but again when he tried to, he was caught by a right hand by Kalzaki. He was quite cute as a counter puncher, isn't he? Yes, he is. He's got he's got fast hands, Kalzaki. Short little punches, and he can get through as somebody's coming forward to him. And a good chin as well. Starry has never really got into it. Not seriously. I wondered if it was going to around the fourth and fifth rounds. But the efforts kind of fizzled out. Fights like this 12 rounds, they seem like about 32, don't they? When they're, when they're like this, it's over. The two of them. Have a chat, Kalzaghi raises his arms, but not with any great glee. I'm not sure he was very happy with his own performance there. To be honest with you, it was not a good fight to watch, but uh, if you are watching it at home, you hardly needed me to tell you that. Well, if he was happy that, he'd be a fool of your Kalzaghi. I don't think he's happy. He, he got the win. He, he moves on again. But um, I mean, that, that was it, really. It wasn't a good performance on Kalzaghi. A very, very poor one for David Sorry, you know, it, Maybe he'll have a reason, maybe there's something wrong, but he just never got in the fight and never really looked as if he wanted it or wanted it. You know, wrestle this, this title away from Joe Calzaghe, and that's what it takes. You know, you're not going to be given one, you've got to take it. 30 more punches landed, according to our computer, by Calzaghe. But um, it was hard to see what was landing on the inside. That's how I did the, the end, 119, 111 for Calzaghe, 8 points difference a big winner on my card Joe Kalzaki in a I poor fight yeah I had it as a seven point margin for Kalzaki who surely has held on to the championship here and there'll be other nights for him to look good but uh, he's now putting together a series of performances which will not win him too many friends among the critics Frank Warren there he doesn't look too amused does he Frank I know that face he's not happy with Joe Calzaghe's performance there, I don't think. No, he's not very unhappy, I'd say. And you're with Wright. I mean, it was a, he's got a big stage. He's managed to promote for Joe Calzaghe. He's put him on the world stage. 
and you know maybe just seen a big contract go up in smoke well he knows as well that he's sold the show time in america a fight that's going to be regarded as a bit of a dud not to mention sky tv of course <laughs> anyway here's jimmy lennon jr one of the great ring announcers in the world to give us the verdict Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ring time, Mickey Van scores about 116 to 113. Judge Billy Lurch sees about 118 to 110. And Judge at ring time, Roberto Ramirez scores about 120 to 108. All three in favor of the winner. And still champion, the undefeated Joe so big margins from everybody except Mickey Van, the English judge who only saw three points in it, that Calzaghi easily retains his title, but it was not a glory night for him by any stretch of the imagination. Well, Joe, you've kept your title, but um, it was to a chorus of boos. It was not a great fight, was it? Lately, and you've always been critical of my performances. I won the title, I won comfortably against a good fighter. But at the end of the day, you've got to take into consideration. I've been out the ring since June, and I was in the ring against a fighter who just wanted to survive. Well, it wasn't only me who was being critical. It was uh, Jim Watt and Barry McGuigan have been yeah, very yeah. hard about it. But, uh, well, no, I mean, it wasn't a good fight. Come on, come on, Joe. It wasn't a good fight, but I watched Jim Watt on TV, and his fights were never spectacular. That's all he used to do. But at the end of the day, I won the, you know, I won the fight. I'm fed up with people being critical all the time. You know, like I said, styles make fights. I've been out the ring since June, which is a long time. I come in against a fighter who just wanted solely to survive. And they should know that when you fight somebody who doesn't want to fight, who's just going to tie you up on the inside, what can I do? I just jab and pick up the points. I'm waiting for the guy to come out and fight. He didn't want to fight. So he's picking up the points. I'm sorry they knocked the guy out. But next time we will see a better Joe Calzaghe. That's a promise. So you're saying really that everybody's got it wrong no, and you produced saying, a good performance here? No, I'm not saying I produced a good performance. What I said is everybody's been critical. I won the fight. Basically, I know I set myself a nice standard with a Eubank fight. The styles made fights. Now this guy come in, he didn't want to fight. He just come to hold and survive. Basically, that was it. And his mixture with the ring rust, give that performance. But at the end of the day, I kept my title. I promise next time they will see a sharper, better Joe Carzag. And hopefully, thanks to put me in with somebody who wants to fight back. All right, you've given your point of view. Thanks a lot, Joe. Okay, thank you. Sounds as though Joe Calzaghe's not best pleased with his press after that effort. Let's hope he can put everything together and soon. Maybe he needs to do it. Just a reminder, later in this show, the whole of Tyson Francis. But when we come back from this break, it'll be Manchester's young light welterweight prospect, Ricky Hatton.